Hi everyone and welcome to the UK's only TV show dedicated to mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show, and I'm your host, Chrissy B. So today we're going to be encouraging you to get moving. Now, we do include fitness tips on our show regularly, but we're going to be dedicating a whole show to it today to explore the benefits of fitness from different angles and show you that anyone can fit it into their life. First up, I'll be speaking to personal trainer Kezia Ibe, who will be telling us all about his fitness regime and will give advice for those who want to get fitter and stronger. And incidentally, Casey is actually the personal trainer to one of our resident guests. Can you guess who? Well, it's actually our very own family coach, Sharon Lawton. Now, Sharon will be telling us about her fitness journey since training with Casey, but she's also here to tell us about what we can do about ch children that want to constantly play video games or be on social media and who don't show much of an interest in exercise. And of course, we can't have a show about exercise without giving you another idea for a quick workout. So expert Natalia Katoska will show us an effective three exercise lower body workout that you can do outdoors with no equipment needed. Then we speak to resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang about the psychological benefits of exercise and why we shouldn't underestimate its positive effects. And we also have our news correspondent, Helen Ashard, who is always searching out the positive news for you. And today, Dr. Rob Hicks will be addressing whether you should exercise if you have been diagnosed with a physical condition and answering questions such as how soon after an operation you can get moving again. Now, I got moving when I went to visit the Pauline Quirk Performing Arts Academy recently, where we continued with the MHD Challenge Tour. And for those of you who don't know, MHD Challenge stands for the Mental Health Dance Challenge, which is a project that I put together to help people fight against depression. So stay tuned for our footage from a very energetic morning. And of course, when we embark on a fitness journey, we also need to look at nutrition for maximum effect. So we'll go to Hannah's Kitchen for a lovely recipe for fish pie. And courtesy of Head Talks, we'll also take a look at a story of Paralympic champion Anne Usher, who was a physiotherapist and competitive cyclist until a back injury left her unable to ride. So how did she end up winning two World Championship golds, three European golds and gold in the Paralympic kayaking in Rio in 2016? So as you can see, we have plenty to get through. So let's go to our first story guest, Casey. Welcome to the show, Casey. Hello. It's lovely to have you on. And we're actually joined as well by Sharon here. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Chris. Now, there is a reason why the two of you together, I have to say, first of all. So, Casey, you are actually Sharon's personal trainer. That's right. How long have you been training, Sharon? Um, two years now. Oh, has it been two, two years? years? Wow, okay. Now, the reason I particularly wanted to get you on the show, Casey, is that I saw uh, some of the, the, the videos that Sharon posts and I have to say that some of the routines and the things that you get her to do are very innovative. They really look interesting. And I thought it was just really great. And I know she's, her fitness level has just <laughs> gone through the roof, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so first of all, can you tell us, how did you get into fitness in the first place? Um, well, I think from a young age, I was uh, quite sporty, I'd say, and quite active. And, um, you know, I loved athletics, boxing, yeah. football, and actually, I started playing football at quite a young age, so you know it sort okay. of stemmed from there, really. Okay. So actually, let's just see you in action first, and then we can come back and you can tell us about some of the routines that you put together. Let's take a look at this, guys. So that looks very artistic, I would say, more like a dance, <laughs> parts of it, but really good. That's, that's true. We do have a couple of videos of Sharon as well, but first of all, Sharon, what is it about the personal training that you, you enjoy? Um, well, I think it's because it's quite 
it's different. I find yeah. it sort of quite different. And I really enjoy the, the challenges. So mm. when I work with Casey, um, I sort of build in, uh, we have two sessions a week. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what I really like is that we, we build in some challenges and some goals, you yeah. know? Yeah. So um, initially, when I first came across Casey, I was telling him this the other day, I didn't want to work with him because I used to see him doing sessions with other people and I'm thinking, I could never do that. Mm. Um, but actually, it's not, it's not been just a fitness journey, it's been a mindset journey as well, you know. So he's really taught yeah. me that, you know, it's not, it's, it's not just about getting a fit mind, it's about getting a fit body. And actually, if you tell yourself you can, then you can. And, you know, and I should know that, really, yeah, being, yeah. A, being a coach, you know, being a life coach. But so it's been a great journey in that respect. Yeah. Actually, when I've seen some of the videos and some of the things you, you get her to do, Case, I'm like, wow, how could you do that? And I was like, <laughs> I was like amazed at how far you've come. Some of the exercises, I'm thinking, you're really strong and stuff. But like I said, yeah. sometimes it is just about, about mindset, isn't and, it? Yeah, absolutely. And he's great at sort of making you believe in yourself, which is, you know, which is really good. That's really yeah. nice. Do you, what about sort of the people aspect? How does it make you feel to kind of get, you know, see progress in people that you're training? Um, yeah, it's really, really rewarding. I find, you know, it's, it's inspiring to me sometimes mm. to just see uh, someone's fitness journey yeah. sort of go from one level to another. Okay, and what about Sharon in particular? Because I know you post up videos of her sometimes. What is it about Sharon that you like? Um, she's she's fearless. So, um, you know, initially I might ask her to do something and I can see the doubt, but she always tries and she always gets there because, yeah. you know, it really is just a mindset thing. Actually, can I let you into a little secret? You inspire me to jump on a box. <laughs> Oh, when I saw Sharon thing. doing it, and I, I was in the gym and I saw this box. It was only sort of maybe like that high, and I was like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And my hubby was with me and he goes, It's all in your head, Chris, you can. And when I tried it, I was like, Yes! And I kept jumping on and off. And it really is like yeah. that kind of thing. So when if you believe you can do it, you really can. But Kes, I'd like to ask you as well, um, some advice now for especially for the for the male viewers out there. Um, what would you say is what advice would you give if they wanted to get like stronger and, and fitter? What would you have them start with? Do you think? Um, I think the first step is to just try and be active. Um, you know, generally just be active and take small steps. Yeah. Uh, set yourself goals and realistic goals, and not so much goals as in you know short term ones. Say if you want to go on holiday and you're thinking, okay, I want to, I've got three weeks and I want to go on holiday and feel good. Try to set um, like lifestyle goals, mm. like changes that you can sustain. And just, just to ask Sharon as well, because we were talking earlier, like sometimes we, it's good to obviously get children involved in exercise mm. from as, as soon as possible, really. But what about, as you know, kids are like, you know, on social media, a lot of games, how would you kind of encourage them away from mm. those things and to actually get fit? Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I think um, a lot of adults equate social media and gaming to the spike in, in poor mental health. Um, mm. And there's actually no scientific research that puts the two together. However, it's interesting that there has been now nationally a dip in children being physically active yeah. and a spike in, you know, sort of where uh, social media and, and gaming is concerned. Mm -hmm. But I think um, it's about role modelling, isn't it, as adults? So we need to role model and make sure that, you know, we're active um, and make it fun. Yeah. Make it fun, you know, use what it is that they like. So are they solitary? So then sort of look at some sort of solitary exercise or sport. Mm -hmm. If they are more of a people person, then maybe, you know, more around interacting with people and, and you know, sort of team sport or team games. Mm -hmm. Are they competitive? So put them in competitive sport. Okay. Um, are they more into their gadgets? So, okay, there's loads of apps out there that, you know, they can track their fitness and, you know, sort of compete against you know, themselves by using the fitness apps and things. So there are okay. lots of ways to do it. But I think yeah. it's about making it fun, making it age appropriate, making it, you know, sort of achievable to start with, you know. Yeah. And maybe get the whole family involved. Definitely. Do you ever, do you ever train like couples or families? Or yeah, I do quite a few um, couples. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting because uh, it gets quite competitive. <laughs> yeah, and you start to hear stories. Um, Male or females? Uh, females. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, and what do you have in store for Sharon coming up from the future? Um, oh, I don't know yeah. if I want to know. <laughs> Sharon, well, we set goals. We set sort of um, short-term goals and try and achieve them, but she just keeps 
uh, reaching them. Um, <laughs> she's she's so, getting a difficult yeah, client, isn't she? Yeah, we're running out of goals because she's just, she's just like a machine. So. Yeah. I would call you Sharon the Machine for now. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so thank you so much for coming to talk about your journey. Thank you. And Sharon, thank you very much as well. And keep You're up welcome. the great work. I will do. And that's how you have been inspiring me. Wow. So Katie's inspired you. You've inspired me as yes. we started a chain reaction. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Long may that continue. Oh, thank you. Okay, everybody. So now, obviously, we can't be talking about exercise without actually showing you some routines as well. So here's Natalia Katowski with an effective three exercise lower body workout. Hi guys, it's me again, Natalia Kotowska and Kid Do It With Nat, your fitness expert. And today I'm going to show you, I'm going to present you some lower body exercises. We're going to go again for three exercises, 20 seconds or 20 repetition long. So stay with me. First one, you're going to go for your deep squat. Nice and low. Your, sh your feet should be shoulders, hips width apart. So you go nice and low, open your chest, squeeze your shoulder blades. Then you're going to turn to the side. You're going to turn to the side, look to the side. You're going to stay low, still stay low, and then you're going to turn to the other side. Make sure your angle over here between your hips and your legs is more or less 90 degrees. You're going to stay low and then come back up, squeeze your butt cheeks on top, squeeze your quads, glutes, and that's what it is. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and come back on the sixth one. It might not look that difficult, but trust me, after 20 seconds or 20 repetition each, you will feel it. So one more time, all the way down to the side, stay low, keep that chest open, wide open, move to the side and come back up. That's your first one. Moving on to the second one. Again, your feet, hips with the part, you're gonna go all the way low, open your chest, wide open, back wide open, touch your toes, and you're gonna jump high up, bum low, as low as possible, sit on your heels, and you're gonna jump again, all the way high up, all the way high up. You're gonna repeat that again 20 times or 20 seconds long. And the third one, very last one, you're gonna jump to the side, touch the floor, and jump to the side, touch the floor. One, two, one, two. Make sure the back leg doesn't touch the floor. You want to touch the floor with your hands only. Open your chest, sit nice and low. Use your bum, use your glutes. Hop and hop, hop. And in this case, we have three exercises, 20 seconds or 20 reps each. Take a break and repeat that three times. Great lower body circuit, guys. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you so much for working out together and I will see you next time. Thank you very much to Natalia there. So after the break, Dr. Audrey Tang will reveal the psychological benefits of exercise and why we shouldn't underestimate its positive effects. And we also have our news correspondent, Helena Shard, who's always searching out the positive news for you. Welcome back to our Let's Get Moving program here on the Chrissy B Show. So now it's time to speak to Dr. Audrey Tang. Hello, Audrey. Hello, thanks for having me, Chrissy. Lovely to have you back. Tell us about what you do to keep fit, first of all. Uh, well, um, what I tend to do is I run practically every day. Ooh, I traded in my gym membership for a treadmill and that's made oh, all the difference okay. because it means I can run even when it's wet because I don't like getting wet very much. Yeah. And also, for me, it's crazy, but the effort to get into my car, to go to the gym, yeah, to come yeah. back again, I wasn't going. But now I just pull the treadmill out and okay. run. Do you normally just great. do treadmill then or do you sometimes go outside? It's, I prefer the treadmill because I can watch programs whilst okay. I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, I do sometimes run outside. When the weather's nice, it's lovely to go outside. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of springtime, I always find it messes with my hay fever, though. So oh, yeah, that's true. having the option is quite nice to do that inside. 
Um, and then as the weather gets nicer, then cycling as well is quite good oh, fun good. too. Okay. How long do you run for instance? Um, I run probably around half an hour okay. every day or not, not probably five out of seven days. Yeah. And That's then good though. I'll do a couple of workout videos as well. So yeah. um, our, your very own fitness coaches are very, oh, very good okay. with that. Yeah. So yeah, that's are. brilliant. So Audrey, why do you think it is so important to, to fit fitness in like mentally as well? Uh, one of the big things when you're sort of taking on a healthy routine it can help you lose weight. And what that can do is it can take a lot of pressure off your joints. That's mm. a big thing. Um, another thing related to just doing basic exercise every day is it can be pre very preventative. So if you start exercising now, as we get a little bit older, mm. our bodies go through a bit more wear and tear. Yes. For example, doing just a couple of squats will help us get in and out of chairs easily <laughs> as we get a little bit older. Yeah. So that's really important too. Yeah. Exercising releases those hormones. It makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes gets us out in the open air if we're running outside or if we're cycling. And that can give us that vitamin D. So that's healthy for us as well. Yeah. Um, also, if you just enjoy getting out, you might meet new people, people doing the same hobby as you, you've got something in common to talk about, even something as simple as taking the dog for a walk. You'll meet other dog walkers and then you talk about the weather, you talk <laughs> about your pets, you you get that social interaction as well, which is really important. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time people will also say that fitness or having a class to go to or something that they look forward to, it means they meet a group of friends, they have a routine, they have something that they are going to enjoy and they know they're going to enjoy it. And that's important as well. And being unfit is probably quite unhappy for a longer time. Mm -hmm. Being fit, you may be unhappy for that short amount of time that you're doing whatever it is you're doing. But for the rest of the time, life is much, much nicer. Sounds like my spin class yesterday, I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I was, I've got, this is such a mess, I have no idea. But painful, like my feet were hurting. Like they're, they're quite painful to sit on those seats as well. Oh, and I, I was saddle, thinking, oh yeah, my saddles, yeah. goodness, but afterwards but I felt good. Exactly, yeah. so. <laughs> you feel good now. And sometimes yeah. it's focusing on those benefits, yeah. focusing on the things that you've been allowed to do because of it. And also remember how much your body's doing for you yes, too. So that's exactly. another important part of psychology. Just Wonderful. be grateful to yes. your body. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Audrey. Pleasure. And we'll see you again next time. Yes. Thank you. Okay, everybody. So now it's time to head over to Helena Shard in this week's A Helping of Happy. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thanks, Chrissy. So can you tell us what you do, first of all, to keep fit? I do a lot of walking, yes. which I am building up. But what I'm doing is I'm going to be, which I'm mm. doing, doing my running, because I used to be an avid runner. Really? Yeah, I used to do those oh. one for the borough and everything, and won awards and medals. And wow. goodness knows what. Yeah, I used to be really, really fit. So now I do lots of being out and about and walking, which I think is great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, long, long time along the canal and everything, which That's is nice. really fun. So, yeah. So, so you I kind do of combine that. it for like yeah. sort of being outdoors and stuff I like that. I love it. Absolutely so will you take up it. running again, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you will. I'm going to, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, we'll I'll keep us posted on how that's going. I will do. You might be doing a little video diary for us, you yeah. never know. Yeah, <laughs> She's I like, yeah. No, no, I'm Maybe not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my worry. God, no. I was going to say, what's in the news? Things. What news you found Thank today? you. So let's get... So again, I'm really on, carrying on the theme, let's get moving, but it's just enjoying the outside. Yeah. So that's really where my, my theme is coming with this. So starting off with Kate's Garden, so Duchess of Cambridge, mm -hmm which is fantastic. I don't know if you saw it, it really, really inspired me and probably inspired everybody. So she worked with um, a couple of professionals and that was the Chelsea Flower Show. Yeah. And it was amazing she had the children there and they were running around. So there was loads of, um, you know, tree houses, you know, little streams and they had yeah, their, they had their nice. shoes and socks off and just were connecting with nature. And the whole reason was really to, to get families to go out and enjoy each other and enjoy the, mm. just being out and about and, and having fun. And the children collected loads of moss and twigs and everything months before to actually oh, make this whole garden. This. Okay, so that was just one of the gardens, but um, there were lots of brilliant gardens there. And the good thing about it is that they're then donated onto different charitable um, trusts and things. And people put bids in and Dawlish Dewan Centre won Kate's Garden. So everything's been transferred over oh, there. Okay. Um, so the patients and hospital staff can enjoy That's what she made, yeah. which is really lovely, isn't it? Really, really nice. Um, 
the world is sort of like this is like this momentous occasion because everyone wants um the, you know the, our society to be great the countryside and everything everyone's working towards a better world to do with i don't know if you saw david attenborough's and greta thunberg's petitioning about mm -hmm. climate change yeah. and things like that so fantastic that there's lots of rewilding going on which is exciting yeah, really yeah. exciting for me and for all of us as well because we can all enjoy it but gps in shetland are now prescribing nature to their patients which is fantastic yeah. isn't it so it's the nhs and rspb which is the wildlife charity have got together and they've rolled it out now to 10 surgeries there mm. so i guess hopefully they're going to roll it out completely i mean it's it's for chronic illnesses really yeah but amazing because obviously we know about you know reduces blood pressure and anxiety and just increases happiness and reconnects yeah, us with nature. Yeah. So um, amazing. You always feel better after a nice walk in the park or something. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And it's the basic things. You don't have to be a rock climber or doing anything no, sensationalist. No. It's yeah. just, and that's another thing that I looked into, which was people using exercise to change their life. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a young lady called Heather Wilson developed lupus, unfortunately, a few years ago. Mm -hmm and had to change her, her lifestyle and you know even getting out of bed felt like exercise to her yeah. but the best thing is when she goes for a walk she feels absolutely amazing and it's a real it's a huge triumph for her and she used to the irony is she used to spend um, hours in the gym every day pumping iron but she never ever got that feeling of satisfaction mm. and that she accomplished a lot and just a simple walk makes her feel like that and the, also, something really important is that she was always talking to people, you know, saying you have to appreciate your body. It's amazing just to see what it's capable of and what it does for us. That's true. Which is, I think sometimes people just focus on the way it looks, but they don't kind of appreciate yeah. what it actually yeah, does. Yeah, when you start now, thinking yeah. about it, it's, it's really it. important. And something else as well, for some people, I suppose, who, for me, I like to just zone out mm. and walk through nature but some people maybe who are used to being on their phones etc there's another thing which is quite simple is orienteering which i forget about so you're still running out in the wild in the woods yeah. wilderness <coughs> but you have you have to navigate from point to point i mean actually my worst nightmare in a way <laughs> but some people would like that yeah, so yeah. It's, it's almost like a race which which is lovely and just ending on Alistair Campbell and his recent depression and me, mm -hmm. um, he obviously left the government, but he now does a huge amount of work for charity. And it was really lovely to see him talking up about his struggles with depression and alcoholism. Yeah. But he gives so much now. And again, running is his life. Yeah. Every day he gets out and about it. and it's a, a great healer. Wonderful. Helena, thank you so thank much. Thank you. And see you again next week. Yes, wonderful. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, so after the break, Dr. Rob Hicks will be addressing whether you should exercise if you've been diagnosed with a physical condition and answering questions such as how soon after an operation you can get moving again. And we'll see what happened on our visit to the Paul and Quirk Performing Arts Academy where we continued with the MHD Challenge Tour. Hi, I'm Chrissy B, host of the UK's only TV programme dedicated to mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show, which airs on MyTV Sky 191 every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Follow our social media on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter at Chrissy B Show and our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. For more information, visit chrissybshow.tv. Welcome back everybody to our Let's Get Moving show and now it's time to talk to Dr. Rob Hicks. Hello Rob. Hi Chris, I had this worry that you're going to use me as a guinea pig again. Not today, no <laughs> press ups or wall stands or anything like that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you guys have watched, been watching the show for a few years you would have seen Rob doing all sorts of things in the studio but we're a bit calmer on you now aren't we? We're kind we, of like you letting are, you you're, you're very very considerate. Very good. Yeah. Rob, what's your personal fitness regime, what do you do to keep fit? Well, I guess my personal regime is just be as active as I can in, when I can and as often as I can. I don't ha mm. actually have a, a fixed program. Okay. I like I like the activity that I do, the exercise that I do. Primarily, I have to enjoy it. Yeah. And then I just try and fit it in around around family uh, commitments and around my work sc schedule. So, for example, um, you know, I've done the, the NHS Couch to Five K 
a couple of times, you okay. know, and I, and I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, if I'm working towards something particular, so I, as you know, I do charity bike rides every now and then, mm -hmm. then I'll spend more time on the bike. Okay. Um, at the moment, what I try and do is at least 30 minutes a day on our cross trainer with a few, um, you know, for light weights. As 30 well. minutes a day, that's really good. Yes, but I don't achieve it every day. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's that, good though. But that's the target. And then, yeah. of course, fitting in activity, you know, I mean, using the stairs instead of the lift. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to go to the post office, jumping on the bike rather than driving in the car. Yeah. All those good. sorts of things. So I try and adapt my activity uh, to be part of the day yeah. okay. rather than, okay, it's 11 o'clock, I'm going to go to the gym. Now I'm going to do it, yeah. Hour. That's the yeah. best way sometimes for some people because well, I, I, like... I think it's more practical for a lot of people. And the idea yeah. really is not so much getting people just to do exercise, but actually to keep active yeah because um, that's where a lot of the health benefits will come okay well I do have a few questions for you I'm gonna actually read off here because I don't want to remember everything um, I just want to ask first of all if you have been diagnosed with a physical condition can you still do some form of exercise would you say so long as your doctor has said it's okay generally speaking the answer is yes because mm. actually you know the, the exercise will benefit the person you know with a with a long term health condition. So, for example, yeah. they might need to lose weight. So, yeah. you know, losing weight might lower their blood pressure. It might help them manage their diabetes, blood sugar levels better. Yeah. It might ease pressure on their heart. It may ease pressure on their joints, for mm -hmm. example. So, take arthritis. A lot of people with arthritis say, "Oh, I mustn't exercise because of my joints." Well, actually, yeah. there's lots of benefits of somebody with arthritis, a painful condition, doing exercise. So, one. They may lose weight, which eases the pressure on the joints. Okay. They build up the strength of the muscles around the knees mm -hmm. or, or the joints to support them. But also, when we exercise, we release endorphins. These are the body's natural painkillers. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's a benefit to anybody who's got a long-term uh, painful condition. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the, the, the emotional aspects, the mental health aspects, you know, we, you know, the exercise activity boosts our mood. So if you're somebody who's stressed or has got anxiety or is suffering with depression, mm -hmm. then, then actually exercise is very good. And in fact, for mild depression, one of the first line treatments is to get active, to, yeah. to do exercise, you know, you know, over antidepressants, for example. Okay. So lots of benefits there. Do you, do you know what kind of exercise normally doctors would recommend if it is a physical condition or maybe something like arthritis? Well, it depends on, it depends on the condition. It mm. depends on what the person needs to do. But, but also it depends on what they enjoy and can do. Yeah, so yeah. it really comes down to tailoring it for the, for the individual. So if it is arthritis, simply going out for a brisk walk. Yeah. would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, actually, swimming is very good for somebody with arthritis because it's the water then that supports the joints yeah. and is taking the pressure off the because joints. It's less painful, isn't it? If if it's, it yeah. yeah, and if it's somebody with high blood pressure you know, who, who, or diabetes who needs to lose weight, then in addition to reducing their calories, it can be anything that the person enjoys and is going to do. Okay. That's, the, that's really the key thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have a physiotherapist who's re recommended to somebody specific exercises. Let's, face, let, let's say they've injured themselves yeah. or they've gone through surgery. Um, but generally speaking, it's just being active and doing that on a regular basis that will benefit yeah. anybody. I think sometimes just that mindset, like you said, oh, you know, if I, if I feel pain, I shouldn't do anything. But actually, sometimes yeah. the pain just... It can alleviate the pain. Yeah, if, I mean, if, if you're you making the, the pain worse by the exercise you're doing, then yeah. obviously stop and yeah. think and think about doing something, something else. else you know, yeah. Speak with your doctor, speak with your physiotherapist, mm -hmm. and say, well, what can I do? Yeah, you know, that would, because that's actually what I'm doing is making things worse. But yeah. you often find that somebody who's unwell, for example, they, they can do some, they can do other exercises. So they might do uh, ride a, a static bike. Mm -hmm. They might walk or or, or run you know, or jog on a, on a treadmill. Um, they, they might do chair based or bed based exercises. So they may be confined Stretches to bed well, for a while, yeah. but there will maybe exercises they can actually do. Yeah. Um, aqua aqua aerobics is another thing. Yeah. That's, that's very, very beneficial. And generally speaking, a, you know, a physiotherapist or indeed a trainer at a gym or a sports facility or a leisure centre should be able to advise somebody yeah. on what's suitable for them. And if you're not sure, ask your doctor. And Rob, just, can you just also let the viewers know, is there anything free on the NHS that they can do? There's lots free on the NHS. So, for example, you know, as I've done, there's the Couch to 5K uh, running programme. There's also health walks. So if you put your postcode into the site, they'll tell you where the health walks are in your area. 
Um, there's also Stretch and Flex, which is a podcast, which is like having your own personal trainer, and it gives you ideas on uh, equipment-free activities that you can do to develop your strength and develop your flexibility. And then there's things like you know green gyms and a- outdoor gyms, you know, like in, in parks and woodlands where you do a bit of walking or jogging. And then there's equipment where you can do some exercises. Yeah, I'm sure you've all seen those. Um, and if you look on your local authority website, then there's a whole host of stuff there as well. So it's not just the NHS. But in the local authority website, there's information too. So there's lots of stuff, lots of free stuff. Um, the bottom line is find something that you like, get out and do it. Yeah, and probably I'll find some great new hobbies as well that they weren't expecting. And make friends. Yes, and make friends yeah. are wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rob, so much. And we'll see you again next time. My pleasure. Thank you. OK, everybody, so now it's time to take a look at our visit to the Pauline Quirk Academy, which is a performing arts school, and they took part in the Mental Health Dance Challenge. So everyone, today I'm really excited because we are here at a performing arts school called the Pauline Quirk Academy and we are here in Welling Garden City today. So the students here have been learning the dance. Um, there's the, the ages range from about 6 to 17, so it's quite a big age range. I'm going to be telling them a little bit about my story, why we put the MHD Challenge together and then we'll be doing the dance together and the older children I've heard have put their, have done their own dance uh, to the MHD Challenge music. So, so looking forward to it. So let's go inside and see what's happening. So everybody, I'm here with Louise Close, who's the principal here at the Pauline Quirk Academy, Welling Garden City. Hello, Louise. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. You've been really excited to be here today, I have to say. So can you tell us a bit about the Academy, first of all? Yeah, so we're a professional performing arts school uh, for four to 18 years. And okay. we deliver film and TV classes, comedy and drama, and musical theatre. Why I'm do you think performing arts is important? Um, I think that it, uh, it lets the individual express themselves in a mm-hmm. certain way. So uh-huh. it was that one subject where I excelled in, so yeah. I get why these guys absolutely love it as well. Okay. I mean, we've got students here what just want to make new friends, gain, yeah. uh, gain more confidence, yeah. and kids what actually want to do it as a career, and they are doing it as yeah, a career, wonderful. going for auditions you know, and working professionally, so it's brilliant. Brilliant, so okay. So we've got a real diverse of students. Wonderful. And what did you think of the MHD challenge when you first heard about it? I thought it was brilliant. I mean, mm. we've got all different students, like I say, from different backgrounds, different home life. Um, and it's, it's just a really nice thing, you know, to do something all together. Yeah. Um, and yeah. OK. And, and why do you think, personally, it's important to talk about mental health, even to very young children all the way up? Uh, to make that aware, uh, the awareness mm-hmm. here um, and the fact that they can come to PQA, it's a safe place. Yeah. And, you know, especially today when we're uh, showing the awareness that they, they can talk about it. Yeah, You know, and they can definitely. come to PQA and, you know, that, that's their safe environment. It's something what they enjoy and today, yeah, yeah. you know, it makes them aware. OK. And what did you think of their performances today? I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> they did so well. Um, obviously, we're not a dance school. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're performing arts school, so we're mainly with the drama. So, yeah. you know, dance, even though we do it within musical theatre, okay. I, think they, I think they did really well picking up the routine. Wonderful. So. So the reason that we did the dance, through the dance, I wanted to actually show the fight against depression. So you know some of the moves that we have in there, right? What are some of the moves? What this? The punching moves, yeah? For example, this move. Does anyone know what this one means when you do that? The pressure out and all the sadness out and like all the scariness out. Yeah. And just get all the happiness in. Yeah, yeah. The, the aim is, yeah, definitely to get the happiness in. Ready to go this 
do you like about this school and, and performing arts? Well, it's just a way to like express yourself with your friends and great teachers. It's just really nice. Thomas, what do you like about performing yourself, and what are you? What's your maybe your speciality? Um, I'm I'm really into dance, and um, I enjoy doing script work. And what do you like about performing? Um, I like how um, as soon as you get into peak where you feel confident and you just want to put yourself out there. For me, it's a way to escape. Um, and to just have fun, you know, and be with my friends. So when you first heard about the Mental Health Dance Challenge, what did you think? Well, it was for a great cause and, you know, raising awareness and it's more common now. What would you say, what message would you take away from everything that, that we've done here today, would you say? Because a lot of people do have it and, you, like, you need to know, like, that it's important. Um, just because um, I might have a problem doesn't mean I'm different from everyone else. I liked how um, some people in PQA might have some problems and I liked how they could be able to express themselves and try their best. Uh, a lot of young people at the moment do struggle with mental illness and it's such a problem and I think talking about it is such a big deal and it really does help to talk about it. Was there anything in the dance in particular that kind of struck a chord with you or that you would say was maybe was your favourite move? Uh, probably just sort of strutting my stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> just sort of showing that, I, you know, I can do it and it's, yeah. it's good, yeah. So I would like to congratulate the Pauline Quirk Academy here in Welling Garden City for successfully completing the MHD Challenge. Well done! <laughs>
go into the fish and sort of give it a bit more texture and flavour. And then we're going to take our fish, our fish mix, all those different colours of fish there and fry that as well. Okay, so there you've got the fish and the onion and you can see that the onions have already started to break up. So I'm now just going to transfer it into a baking dish, an oven proof dish and I'm just going to line it all in the bottom just like that. Now let's go back to the broccoli. Earlier on, I roasted some sweet potatoes and some beetroots, and they're gonna act as the topping for this fish pie. I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil to give it a little bit more moistness as I mash, and I'm gonna add some flavorings as well. Black pepper, and for a little bit of spice with this pie, some chili flakes. And then all we're going to do is just mash these sweet potatoes around the bowl. So back over to the fish pie. I'm going to put that all into the middle there and then just working out from the middle outwards, starting to move it around the dish, spreading it out as you go. And then you're going to take your beetroots and you're going to sort of a medium slice, not too thin this time because we want them to be a protective layer. So then once you've done all your beetroots, you're just going to, at the base of the pie, take them around like this, where your creative skills can come in. So, once you've put all your beetroot on top of your fish pie, you're gonna put it into the oven at about 160 to 70 degrees for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna take it out and have a look. Oh, that looks perfect. I'm just going to plate up our plate. Broccoli on the side. Don't forget your green leaves, guys. It's my top tip, top rule. Good digestive health always starts with a nice little green leaf. Then you've got a little bit of olive oil and a splash of cider apple vinegar. I'm gonna add a couple of bits of pineapple for some sweetness. And remember that is also a digestive enzyme, bromelain in there as well. A little bit of seasoning, black pepper, and then we're gonna dig into this pie. And there you have it. Optimal nutrition on a plate. Thank you very much to Hannah there. And now, courtesy of Head Talks, it's time to take a look at the story of Paralympic champion Anne Usher, who was a physiotherapist and competitive cyclist, but then she had a really serious back injury and she couldn't actually ride uh, anymore, or she, was, and she also wasn't able to heal herself, actually. So she felt an inward spiral of failure and feeling she was the victim. Now, volunteering for the London Olympics in 2012 was one of the best tonics and led to a chance meeting with the British Paralympic canoeing coach. Now, despite hating boats and suffering from chronic seasickness, she was selected for the kayaking squad. And as a working mum in her late 40s, Anne didn't fit the conventional mould of an elite athlete. But her crazy dream, as she says, came true. She won two World Championship goals, three European goals, and gold in the Paralympic kayaking in Rio in 2016. So here's what she has to say. Sometimes when you're going through life, you think, well, you know, I've got a plan, everything's going according to the plan that I've made. And 
you don't expect anything unexpected. And sometimes these things just come in at the worst moment. And it doesn't have to be something big. It can be something really small. But if it affects your life and stops you doing what you want to do, it's, it's very, very significant. And for me, all I did was bend forwards and put my shoe on. And it, it ruptured a disc in my back, which irritated and affected my spinal cord, which then stopped my leg from working properly. And in the beginning, I was like, I can get over this. I'm a physio, I know how to, I know how to get back on my bike, I know how to function as a, as a worthwhile human being again. But the fact was, no matter how much I tried, no matter how much effort I put in, I just couldn't get back to the life I'd had and the life I loved. And there's something really awful about seeing other people continuing on in the life that you want when you can't be with them. And I couldn't bear it. I, I could not be with my old friends because they reminded me too much of what I wanted. So I just pulled myself back from them. I isolated myself because I just didn't want to be reminded of what I'd lost. And at the moment, I'm trying to look at my life in this way. But what happens if I try and do my life in a different way? So instead of trying to ride my bike and failing, why don't I put my energy into something else? Into something else I know I'll love. And I, I still love being part of sport. I just didn't know quite how. And luckily, as a physio, I could volunteer. And volunteering is one of the best tonics for when you're in a bad mental place because you're giving something useful. You're affecting other people's lives and making them have a, a better experience because of what you've added to their experience. So volunteering just gave me back that buzz for sport. And as a physio, I was helping other people in their teams to perform at their best and win medals. And it just suddenly lifted my life. And I felt that I had a purpose. I felt that I was appreciated for what I could do. And all the time before, I was thinking about what I couldn't do. And by this little change in direction, I was now able to consider what I could do. And that's incredibly powerful and incredibly empowering. Outside of the, the, the Olympic Park, the, the magic really happened. I was sitting there minding my own business, drinking a cup of coffee in a, in a coffee shop, waiting for my, my shift to start. And another games maker came and sat next to me. And we just started talking. And you kind of wonder how many conversations you miss because you've got your head down and your eyes closed. But because it was the Olympics and because everyone was being friendly and open, we began this, this conversation. And he turned out to be a GB para canoe coach. And he didn't know anything about my past. He didn't know what I'd been through. He didn't know what I could or couldn't do. But he suggested something from his world. He said, well, you know, you've got a weak leg. That means you'll be brilliant in a kayak. And at the time, he didn't know that I hate boats, that I get seasick, that I'd never even considered kayaking. But there was something, something magical about being at the Olympics that made me think, wow, anything is possible. And I didn't for one minute consider, I'm middle-aged, I've never been in a boat, I have a full-time job, I'm a full-time mother. You know, these things just didn't even seem to enter into my conscious mind because I just so wanted to have something new and exciting, a possibility that perhaps I could achieve at something else. The first thing to do when you can't do something is, instead of thinking negatively, is to find a way around it. So I rang up my local kayak club and I said, oh, I, I really would like to learn to paddle a boat because I'd like to be on the GB team in uh, oh, seven weeks because that's when the trials were. And they were great. They didn't laugh at me. They didn't put me off. They didn't say, you know, it's not going to happen. They said, come and come down and let's see what we can do. And in fact, as a brilliant coincidence, we have just been had a boat donated that's a para canoe, and we're doing a photo shoot for the press tomorrow. So if you can come down and be that athlete, then we'll get you going with a coach. So I remember standing there doing this photo shoot as an athlete, never having been in a boat. And it kind of gave me a, an image of what was possible. In fact, all I needed to do was do a 200 meter sprint. And that's what they taught me. So I turned up at the GB trials and my time qualified me to join the GB para canoe squad. And so <laughs> I got an email through saying, congratulations, and can you keep these dates free for the European and World Championships 2013? So from being an absolute novice to suddenly sitting there with this tangible thing in front of me, a goal that I could perhaps achieve at, was 
the biggest lift that, that I could have. And yeah, it was, it was a goal that was so far away from my current state. You know, I, I'd been in a boat maybe 20 times and never raced apart from that one time trial at the test event for seeing if I could get onto the squad. And yet here was I imagining that one day I might make Rio. Thanks very much to Head Talks for that video. And if you'd like to know more about them, please do head over to our website, chrissybshow.tv, and click on our contributors section. Well, we've almost reached the end of today's program, and I'd like to thank all of my guests that I've had on today. And also, I hope this uh, program has actually encouraged you to get up and start moving. Now, I know I've spoken about this on, on the program a thousand times before, but just for the benefit of the newer viewers, I'm all into exercise. I think it's really good to exercise. But again, you know, I don't think exercise should be used as an escape necessarily. It's good to kind of let the stress out. If you've had a difficult day, you know, go to the gym, pump some weights. Yeah, it feels great. But it's not enough to do that to resolve um, certain mental health issues that you have. For something like that, exercise can be used to enhance your mood and everything like that, but it's not going to cure the problem. So if there is something going on with you, if there is a, a deeper rooted issue, please do make sure that you get help for that so that you won't do what I did in the past and get addicted to exercise because it made me feel better for a while. It's very important that you get to the root of the problem. And you know, as I've spoken, we've, spoke, we've asked the guests today what their fitness regime is. I do also work out, not excessively like I used to because I, I, I was, you know, as I said, I used that as a trying to get rid of the depression. So now I'm, I'm more kind of balanced in the way I exercise. So I normally get to the gym maybe uh, three times a week. I'll do a couple of classes a week and a, a gym session as well. And on one day, I make sure like I walk quite a bit. I make sure I get like about 12 to 14,000 steps in. So that's kind of like four, four times a week. So the, the one day actually is just part of something that I'm doing anyway. So don't underestimate exercise as well because it does actually make you uh, feel less lethargic. I'll be honest with you, I don't always feel like um, going to do any exercise. Actually, most times I don't feel like it, but I don't listen to the feelings because let's face it, if we kind of just went by what we feel, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't get done. There's some things that we would do that we shouldn't do, right? We have to kind of let the, the brain kick in and we need to think more about the benefits. I, when I don't feel like going to the gym or working out, I, I kind of look ahead and I say to myself, how will I feel if I don't work out? I always say that I will regret if I don't actually do the workout. However, I have never ever regretted going to a class or going to a gym, even though I've had to push myself, even though I had to really be disciplined and like, literally, like even last night, I had to drag myself to the gym. I really had to drag myself. But once I was there, once I got into it, when I came home, I was so glad that I did. And I know I would have felt bad if I hadn't gone. So always remember that it's not about what you feel, it's not whether you feel like doing something or not. If you know it's good for you, push yourself, think of the, you know, how you're going to feel afterwards and that should give you the motivation to keep going. Well everyone, now we have actually reached the end of our program. If you have a story that you would like to share, please do get in touch with us by emailing info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet or Instagram us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like to know more about my mental health journey, you can visit my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. Until next time, bye-bye for now.